Here we are, the final stamp of the season, and it's a US definitive stamp displaying Lady Liberty, the famous New York statue. There is a year on it in the top left, 2011, and turning it over we can see that the stamp is a first class forever stamp. Forever means that the stamp will retain its first class value, regardless if the rate increases in the future. It therefore doesn't have a dollar value written on the stamp. There is a cancellation, but the only thing that I can make out are the letters USPS, which stands for the United States Postal Service. Looking it up online, the stamp wasn't issued in 2011 as I thought, it was actually issued in December of 2010. Now I have a mint unused pane of 18 of these first class stamps, and you can see that they came as a set of two, the one being the Statue of Liberty and the other simply being the United States flag. Now this wasn't the first time that the Statue of Liberty has made it onto a stamp. Uh, I've found several just from looking through the box alone and you can see that some are airmail, some are colorful, some are commemoratives as well as definitives, uh, all of which have been United States stamps. And here's another one with Frederick Bartholdi who is the sculptor of the Statue of Liberty. Now, I think it's only fair that we go on one more adventure to end the season. Partly to look at the Statue of Liberty and learn about her, but also to look at one of the biggest mistakes that has ever been made in stamp history. What you're looking at is an error. And if you can't tell what it is, that's fine. I had no idea until I read up about it. In fact, this error went unnoticed for a few months. But it's pretty obvious once I tell you what it is. So let's go to the Statue of Liberty and investigate it. So I'm on Liberty Island, which is right in New York Harbor, home of the iconic Statue of Liberty. And she really has a fantastic presence when seeing her in person. She is 151 feet or 46 meters tall. And she was given by the French in 1886 to the US as a gift. Speaking of the French, did you know she has a sister on the other side of the Atlantic? This is the Statue of Liberty in Paris, France. It's actually a quarter-sized replica of the one that's in New York City. And it was given by the Parisian community of America to the French in 1889, just three years after the one was presented to New York City. And it's actually to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the French Revolution. You don't believe me I'm in Paris? Follow me. Check it out, the Eiffel Tower. Now, let's go back to New York. So here's the crazy thing, is that the stamp we pulled from the box is in the picture of the statue that's behind me. The United States Postal Service made a massive mistake. In fact, they took a picture from the internet that is actually belonging to a different statue altogether. Not the one in Paris, France, but this one. Here it is, this is the statue that's on the stamp. And it's actually part of the New York, New York Hotel here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Unlike the 151 foot statue that's in New York Harbor, this statue is only 100 feet tall. And it's only been here since 1997. The USPS really believed that this was the statue in New York City. 
and it took an observant stamp collector to notice and point out the mistake. How noticeable is the difference? Well, you can see in these two pictures that the statue in Las Vegas is considered a fresher look uh, with softer facial features. Hey, it fooled me. You know what else I noticed here in Las Vegas? Come check it out. Another Eiffel Tower. I guess Vegas has everything. Now, I'm going to do some more exploring and I'll see you back at base. Now, when the United States Postal Service eventually found out about their mistake, they continued to print it, saying that they would have picked the image anyway, even though it was the wrong statue, because it was such a good fit for the stamp design. They printed billions of the stamp, and eventually the sculptor of the Las Vegas statue filed a lawsuit against the United States Postal Service, because he claimed that it was copyright infringement. So that brings us to the end of a season, and I've learned a lot. I hope the same is for you from what is a Phrygian cap, a Blerio 11, a Blue Mauritius, who is Arthur Guinness or Morris Bishop, where's Malta? And I've learned all of this from simple postage stamps. They've been brilliant at capturing geography and culture and history and moments, and it's been extremely fascinating to explore. So if you've watched all the episodes, please comment below and let me know what you think. Where should I go from here? Should I make another season or try something very different? I value all input and I've had a lot of fun making these videos. So thank you for joining me on this journey and more videos are to come. If you're not yet subscribed to the channel, you should definitely hit that button to see what comes next. Also, it's free to subscribe. Oh, and hey, if you want to spend a high quality 103 minutes of watching stamp videos, click on that playlist and watch them all again. Anyway, thanks for watching and see you next time.